So reaching consensus is extremely critical in a distributed system as we would have situations day in and day out where we need nodes to agree upon a common value. The tricky part here is to achieve agreement even when the nodes participating in the consensus crash. In this video, we talk about the simplest algorithm called a flood set algorithm that helps us achieve fault tolerant distributed consensus. We look at how it fits into the real world and talk about the complexity it incurs. But before we move forward, I'd like to talk to you about a course on system design that I've been running for over a year now. The course is a cohort based course, which means I won't be rambling a solution and it will not be a monologue. Instead, a small focus group of 50, 60 engineers, every cohort will be brainstorming systems and designing it together. This way, we build a solid system and learn from each other's experiences. The course to date is enrolled by 600 plus engineers spanning nine cohorts and 10 countries. Engineers from companies like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Slack, Facebook, Tesla, Yelp, Flipkart, Dream11 and many, many, many more have taken this course and have some wonderful things to say. The coolest part about the course is the depth we go into and the breadth we cover. We cover topics ranging from real-time text communication for Slack to designing our own toy load balancer to Greek Buzz's live text commentary to doing impressions counting at scale for any advertisement business. In all, we would cover roughly 28 questions and the detailed curriculum uh, split week by week can be found on the course page which is linked in the description down below. So if you are looking to learn system design from the first principles, you will love this course. I have two offerings for you. The first one is the live cohort based course which you see on the left side and the second one is the recorded course which you can see on the right side. The live cohort based course happens every two months and it will go on for eight weeks while the recorded course contains the recordings from one of the past cohorts as is. If you are in a hurry and want to binge learn system design, I would highly recommend you going for the recorded one. Otherwise, the live cohort is where you can participate and discuss things live with me and the entire cohort and amplify your learnings. The decision is totally up to you. The course details, prerequisites, testimonials can be found on the course page arpitbhairi.me slash masterclass and I would highly recommend you to check that out. I put the link of uh, the course in the description down below. So if you are interested to learn system design, go for it. Check out the link in the description down below and I hope to see you in my next cohort. Reaching consensus is extremely important for any distributed network. Say in a database cluster of three nodes, one node says that the value of price is $1,000 while the other node says the value of price is $2,000. Now, depending on where the request goes, we either get 1,000 or 2,000. This is the classic problem of having inconsistency in our data. That is where we want the nodes to talk to each other and come to a consensus key what the actual value of price is. Right. This is the classic problem of distributed consensus and achieving distributed consensus is easy. It's easy when you have zero failures. So your, your node to node communication channel is perfect. Your processes never crash. Achieving distributed consensus becomes extremely simple and right. it's just exchanging a bunch of messages and you'll have a nice consensus handy, but it becomes impossible. Again, a very strong word, it becomes impossible when your network is unreliable, which means that if there is no guarantee that if you send a message from one node for it to reach the other node, if there is no guarantee to that, then it is impossible to achieve distributed consensus. In the previous video, we talked about it through the two generals problem, why it is impossible to achieve. Right? Now, the third case where we assume some degree of failure of network, but we think that what the processes are unreliable, which means that while, while building a consensus, if processes crash, how would we handle that? This is what would be the problem statement for today. We would understand that how do we set up distributed consensus where we assume processes could fail, right? So a formal statement for that would be that we have a complete N graph or N node graph. So, which means that every node knows about existence of every other node, right? And a classic database cluster would, would, would very easily be an example of that. You might have 10, 15, 20 nodes in your cluster and every node knows about every other else, right? So all nodes and processes start with some value, which means that every node or process knows that, Hey, this should be the value of price, for example, and they all are trying to reach to a consensus on what the final value is going to be. Right. And every node knows the default value for that. Maybe 
the old value was 100 and everyone's trying to update to either 1000 or 2000. So default value would be 100. It's just an example. The problem statement is very generic, right? So that you can apply it to hundreds of cases, huh? hundreds of applications per se, right? So what we want is we want all the nodes to agree upon one same value for the variable price. Now, the possible value for the possible values of price would be stored in capital V. It's just a nomenclature in capital V. There would be all possible values out of which one every node would be agreeing on. Right. So what do we want from our consensus? We want that no two processes, no two processes decide on different values, which means that once we know that we reach the consensus, no matter what, every process or every node in your system would all agree upon that one value. Right, be it Vx or V0, Vx is the agreed upon value or V0 the default value, which means our transaction either commits or rolls back. Right, if all processes starts with V belonging to capital V, then they decide on V, which means that if all processes say that the value should be 1000 and no one pitched any other value, so then the value that everyone would be converging on has to be 1000 which means that they should not be picking a value which is out of their scope. Like every process should not converge and say that 1001 is the final value, right? So the value that is selected should be the one that is proposed. And if everyone starts with that same initial value, everyone should be agreeing on that same initial value. Right? And all non-faulty processes eventually decides that if the process survives the consensus, everyone should be in a situation where they have decided on the final value. Right? Now this we would achieve through an algorithm called the flood set algorithm. The core idea of flood set algorithm is extremely simple, extremely intuitive and that's the beauty of distributed systems. It's very simple. It's just that you have to handle a lot of failure cases. Okay. So the core idea of flood set algorithm is that we keep a track of all the values seen so far. E, V as in every single node would keep a track of all possible values that they have seen so far and they use some decision rule, some decision rule to pick one. Right? So this is the core idea of it, which means that in a complete graph, every node would maintain a set W and W would be a subset of all possible values V. Right? Everyone would start with an empty, they would put in the value that they think is correct and then they would somehow get from every other node key what possible values is. And now, what do we do? So this is a synchronous algorithm, which means every node would move forward synchronously. And so if we assume that processes crash, nodes would crash. If we assume that, we can assume that, hey, at max, F nodes would fail. So F is the failure rate that we are assuming, that F nodes would fail while this consensus is happening. Then the flood set algorithm would run for F plus one rounds, right? Flood set algorithm would run for F plus one rounds, which means that we are giving enough chances for the nodes to crash. So which means after F plus one rounds, if my nodes, so at max we are, uh, at max we are saying that F nodes would fail. Even if they fail, we would still reach the consensus, right? So that's why our algorithm would run for F plus one rounds. Right? So that everyone gets enough chance to fail. Right? And after F plus 1 rounds, the processes that survive are the non-faulty processes and they have to make that decision and that decision has to be unanimous. Right? And that's why this algorithm goes for F plus 1 rounds. Right? So that everyone gets their chance to fail. Right? Okay. So what's the flow? As simple as that. To make the decision. Right? Every process would say that, hey, the value of, uh, let's say, price is 1000. Someone would say 2000, someone would say 3000, right? depending on where the API call went and how they are trying to converge. Now, when you're trying to reach this consensus, what would happen is everyone would have this W set, right? This W set would be the set that they are proposing of all values that they have seen so far. So W would be the set in which they would first put the value that they think is the right one, right? So they would initialize their set with the value that they hold. Now, for each round, every node 
broadcast this W in the network, which means that because every node knows about existence of every other node, when they broadcast, they send message to every other node, right? So every node broadcasts W in the network. When the node receives W from others, it does a set union and updates its W. So what would happen is every round a node is broadcasting the value and it is and because it is broadcasting the value, every node would be receiving W from every other node and the node would keep on doing set union of all the values that it is getting, which means after F plus one rounds or rather even after the first round also, they would be getting all possible values that every single node thinks about it. For example, if some node think price to be 1000, some nodes think price to be 2000. So after F plus one rounds, every single node in the distributed network would have W is equal to 1000 comma 2000. Right? They are getting all possible values that all possible nodes think while setting up that consensus. Right? Now, given that every node has the entire exact same information. Now, all they have to do is just decide. So, if the W, the set that the node has, it contains just one element, which means all the nodes during the first step itself, they were thinking of the same value, then they will be picking up that only element, which is part of the set, right? If not, in case W contains more than one element, every node is independent. And then what they would do is they see that W has more than one element. So they cannot decide which one to pick. So they would pick the default V0. This is a very generic statement. Now implementation is totally up to you, right? So if W contains more than one element, which means that your, your consensus could not be formed. So you would pick the default option, right? So this way we see that if all nodes start with the same V, after F plus one round, the W would just contain V at every node independently. And hence every node would be deciding on V to be the final value. Fine. Okay. Now, what is an alternate decision strategy? A simple example for that again, that instead of picking a default value, given that the first phase of this algorithm for the F plus one round, nodes are continuously broadcasting the W that they have seen so far which means after F plus one rounds, they all would have seen all possible values that they need to agree upon, right? After, because they've seen all possible values, all they have to do is just make a decision. Now they can make alternative decisions. For example, they can see, I'll pick the smallest one out of it, depending on your use case, or you may pick, I'll pick the newest one out of it. Like for example, it's that uh, at 9 a.m., like someone is setting $1,000 at 90000, uh, someone setting 2000 at, uh, uh, at basically one second past nine, someone setting 1500 at two second past nine. To build a consensus, you may choose to pick the newest value. Totally up to you. So primarily the idea is, so long as you have a total ordering of the values, somehow you know that this would be the latest one. Right. Maybe through timestamp, maybe through global ID, anything. If you have a total ordering of values, you may have that as a decision strategy because the first phase of this algorithm says that, Hey, I'll ensure that I'm flooding the network with all the values that are there. I'll ensure that every node has every value possible and they would just need to have their own decision strategy. So you may choose to discard that if I have more than one elements in the set, no one would make any decision, people would fall back. It's like aborting, right? Someone would say that now that I have all the values, we'll pick the latest one or we'll pick the smallest one, we'll pick the newest one. Totally up to you. Depending on what kind of consensus you would want to build, you would change your decision strategy, right? As simple as that. So this is the beauty of this algorithm. It's extremely simple to understand, but extremely handy. You'd see this in a lot of real systems out there, right? The key point, if you have total ordering of the values, it's up to you on how you want to decide. If you don't have total ordering, you may just decide to abort it. And now let's talk about complexity analysis. of it. You can very clearly see that the algorithm would take order of F plus one time because you are having F plus one rounds. So depending on uh, how, uh, how much tolerance you want for the failure, let F processes could fail, F plus one would be the order in which like up until which your algorithm would run. In each 
round every node sends its w to every other node so the communication complexity which means the total amount of messages exchanged would be equal to f plus 1 into n square because in each round every node is sending n messages to n nodes so communication complexity for this algorithm would be order of f plus 1 n square right it's it seems huge it's not because your number of nodes would not be that substantial to be honest right five nodes 10 nodes 50 nodes right when you are setting up consensus you are not doing it at an internet scale right obviously there are algorithms to do that much more efficiently but this on a smaller network would work just fine right but understand the core idea behind it this is such a generic explanation now you can put it and now you can put it to use into your specific use cases right great that's it that's it for this video if you guys like this video give this video a massive thumbs up if you guys like the channel give this channel a sub i post three in-depth engineering videos every week and i'll see you in the next one thanks a ton.